All right, this is going to be a short video on how to uh, create an exploded view, just like the one that you see here in this document. This one happens to be specific to the Arbor Press, but um, really the basics will apply to any type of exploded drawing that you're going to be doing. So as you know by now that uh, anything that we do in a document file, uh, these views are base views that are really just looking at a, a, another file. Um, and in this case, this exploded view is stemming from a presentation file or a .ipn file. And here it is, where you can see the uh, this in this case the Arbor Press has been pulled apart um, to the separation that we're looking for to show all the relationships of the parts going together. So, in order to do that. Um, to, to recreate this one right here, we're going to start a new file. I'm going to assume at this point that you had created your assembly view. And so we're going to go to new file. And we're looking for, right down here, a standard IPN file. Notice right there I have templates this is my main selection standard IPN and I'll just double click that to go ahead and start it. <clears throat> so on the ribbon we're used to working left to right here first tab left to right create a view so we're going to single click on that and we're going to browse to the assembly that you've created. In this case it's the Arbor Press. And we're going to leave the explosion method set to manual and click OK. And there we go. There's our Arbor Press all pulled in. Um, environment's kind of the same. F4 allows us to rotate. I'm going to spin this around so you can look at it somewhat similar. I imagine that you know, if I was recreating this one specifically, I'd have this piece of paper sitting at the desk. There we go. So that I can take a look at how far apart things are pulled <clears throat> without having to flip back and forth. But, um, so there's a couple things here. The base, pin, and table in this example are in line with each other. And if you notice carefully, this trail here, that's what these lines are called, this trail goes up and back, or to the right, and that's where the column and all the other parts come off of. Okay, so I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to just tap Asymmetric, and the tool we use to pull everything apart is called Tweak Components. If you click on that, in this window it's going to ask kind of working top to bottom or left to right across these windows first of all what direction do you want things to move and you can pick any surface or edge on the screen to be your reference I personally use edges for everything um, so when I mention the column and everything else went up and to the right or <clears throat> we could pull this base left and down. So that's what I'm going to do. So I want to move these, the base, the table, and the pin to the left. Um, I'm going to pick an edge that represents left to right. And in this case, it's this bottom. It could be any edge. It could be this one. It could be this one, this one, and so on and so on. So the first click there sets my axis that things will slide along. Okay, now the computer wants to know what components am I going to move. So it's one click on the base, click on the uh, table, and one click on the pin. And this might be a good time to expand in the browser um, the assembly so that we can see all the parts and see what parts we're highlighting. And once you've picked the parts that you want to slide, now you simply left click anywhere in the blank space and hold and move them in the direction you want. 
and after you've slid them a little bit, now I want them to go down. So if I look closely at my little axes here that allow me to go up and down, in this case it happens to be X, we're not going to look down on the, the, you know, the parent orientation here, we're going to look at this specific uh, datum here, X is up and down, so I'm going to switch to X in the window, and I'm going to start sliding down, and I'm going to glance back to see the order again, goes table, pin, base. So I'm going to assume I have the table bolt where I want it. I'm going to hold the shift button, click on the table to deselect it, left click the blank space to slide down a little bit more, and kind of see I get a nice little gap there. Press shift to deselect the pin, and drag the base down a little bit more again. And there we go. Uh, close. And I've just started pulling this thing apart. Let's look back at our drawing. I've got a few things we could do here next, but I think I'm going to jump right into this gear. <coughs> Excuse me, gear sleeve handle on the two ball ends. So we're going to go back into tweak components. Uh, the direction is going to be, you know, kind of this uh, side to side motion on the screen. So I'm going to pick any edge. It could be axes actually. Oh, but if I go right around here, this is one time I can actually use these tangent edges for something. And in this case, it's saying it's Z, so it doesn't really matter to me as long as it's highlighting the, the line that represents what I'm going to slide along. And I want to move the sleeve, hold the shift key, zoom in, get the gear. This is, um, every time I click right now, I'm holding shift because I'm trying to move these all as a group. So what I did there is I picked the handle, this ball end, and this ball end. You can see everything highlighted over in the browser. Once I have what I want selected, I left click hold, pull out, and about to there. <clears throat> While holding the shift key, I'm going to click on the gear to deselect it. I'm going to grab and pull these out some more and close because there's no other movement in this direction right now. And go right back into tweak. Uh, th that time I wasn't able to just switch the axes because uh, this just didn't happen to fall on the X, Y, or you know, the other two that I was looking for. So I'm going to go back in here, direction, pick the handle, gives me the center line reference. You can see it right up in there. And in this case I'm going to shift click on it on this and those two up a little bit. Shift click on that to deselect the handle and then move that ball a little bit more. And then shift deselect that ball. Then click on that one. Oh and here, this, I'm kind of glad this happened because this is a common mistake of accidentally picking more than what you want. So again, I would try deselecting that, reselecting this ball in, and move it again. You know, if it's just not the selections aren't working the way you want, just close the tweak, open up a new tweak window again, center line of the handle, this one component, and pull down. Okay. That's the most common problem we see in this IPN files that just <clears throat> um, selecting the components you actually want to slide. And this time it's just the one, so I close it. Let's see. Let's go back to the document file. And here, let's move around kind of here. We got cover plate and the four screws. I'm going to tweak again. These things are all going to be going back this direction. So this edge right here should work nicely. And it's, and if you notice, after you pick your direction, it automatically goes to components. 
That's why I picked the edge and automatically picked that plate cover. Then holding shift, I'm going to pick that screw and that screw. We're actually going to F4 rotate here. That way I can shift key, select the other ones. F4 rotate back. Tap the corner of the glass box, zoom in a little bit. And in the blank space, grab when I'm ready to drag. Shift key to deselect the cover. And just drag those screws out a little bit further. Looks good. Close. Uh, the little <coughs> rack pad stays down below, but we need to pull the gear or the rack up. And that screw to the side and this screw at the back. So tweak to move. And again, we can pick a vertical edge right here, or edge off the column, it doesn't matter. Switch to component, click on that rack, left click and grab anywhere in the blank space. Move up, looks good. Close, tweak component. I want this screw to pull out to this direction, so again, that tangent edge works nice. That's the component. Um, let's go back to my isometric view I'm trying to recreate. Left click hold in the blank space to drag. Right about there. Close because I'm done working on that part. Tweak component. We're going to be pulling this screw down to the right so it's this edge would work. It's that component. I'm just grab in the blank workspace and pull backwards and right about to there so we hit close and that is how you create an exploded view so you're just constantly working with this tweak tool <clears throat> once it's all pulled apart there are other tricks you can do with animate um, if you want to see it all go back together on its own and some things like that but um, that is the basics of an exploded view drawing I hope that helps